don't look far. Madam Shule is the deputy speaker. That. The, I did. The, 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 she's the deputy speaker. Yes. And she's telling you that it is within our rights to question. When we que she has uttered the word we like eight times. Is she speaking for the legislature or the executive? The debate is about the executive and the judiciary. No, political you know, Madam Shule is, Madam the Shule have, have known this. for so long. Mm. Political she's, leaders she's a brilliant, have spoken about She's a brilliant this. lawyer yes. and a very reasonable person. But she has drunk from a poisoned well. <laughs> and that well is poisoning her mind. <laughs> so that she has even forgotten that we elected her as the deputy speaker of another independent arm that is supposed to check on the executive. And she is now coming to do what you'd have thought the attorney general or somebody deep in the executive mm. would be doing, defending executive action and utterances. Now, it is totally wrong. Let me explain. First, so of, first all, of all, first, they, uh, no, let me just explain. You know, uh, Madam Shulei says that the executive made certain promises and therefore they must keep them. This is not about who made what promise. And nobody is stopping anyone from making any promise. It is not even the mandate of the judiciary to question the policies and promises made by this regime. The only thing the judiciary can do, and that's all they have done, is to ask, is what you are doing constitutional? Is this also being done constitutionally? The very things that now is making them lament, which is the health laws, you know, amendments, the affordable housing thing, Madame Shulei knows. On the floor of parliament, I pointed out the very things that the court now pointed out, okay? And I even told them that I am not in that regime, but assuming that's what you want to do, please do it legally and lawfully. Please make sure that you cannot go and start, start taxing Kenyans without a legal legislative basis. Because the finance bill and act is not a basis. That is just designates the process. There must be a legislative basis. That is what the court told them. That is what now they're trying to do. They could have done it then. So it's not about determining for them which policies. Look, we've heard from this same regime that they will only give employment to those who voted for them. Well, that might as well be their policy because no one has denied it. Do you think that policy can stand the test of legality in court? Of course, the court will say no. The court will say the Constitution abhors discrimination of any sort, including on political grounds. So such a policy will again be struck down. So instead of looking at where the problem is, which is this, we have a regime that believes that it can impose its will on Kenyans and cannot be questioned in terms of reasonableness, cannot be questioned in terms of constitutionality, and anybody who dares do that then is against the people. That is just wrong. The executive must understand that they have no superior authority over the other arms. Under Article 1, only the people are sovereign. And in fact, if, if you look at the hierarchy, it is parliament that is mentioned first then the executive, then the judiciary. There is no way and no basis on which the executive can believe that it can now impose its will on the judiciary or the legislature. The fact that they've succeeded in doing it for the legislature is courtesy of the leadership we have in the legislature. But I'm glad that the leadership in the judiciary is resisting that takeover. And I think and I applaud you. Now, coming back to whether you should correct, uh, you know, you should talk to your editors. Yes. This is splitting hairs. I am not aware of what happened in Kisumu today, but it's very simple. Where the court says that parliament cannot undertake public participation, because that's usually the word. Public participation comes in many, many forms. It comes by way of written memoranda. It comes by way of oral hearings. It comes in many forms. <laughs> Some even just send emails. It's public participation, and all of it is always in a report. Where the court has said that public participation should not be held, and then you say the court only say, talked of receiving written memoranda, fact, let me not quote hearing. The judgment it, is, the court. it is outrageous. And if that happened, uh, you know, Jeff, then they are succeeding in intimidating the judiciary, which is their entire intention. No interpretation can say that you can now go and be heard, but you cannot submit something in writing, even if you have su summarized it in writing. That's just 
a distinction without a difference. No, okay. no, but let, let me read for you the exact reading of the judgment, that, uh, the, the ruling that was Thank given so when they issued the conservatory orders the first time on the 19th of December. It says, in the interim, conservatory orders be and is hereby issued to prohibit the conduct of public participation in the manner prescribed on the 9th December 2023 in the local dailies until the application is heard. So That's it was my the, exact point. So now public participation is continuing, not in the, in the manner that had been prescribed in the 9th, uh, 9th of December announcement, but a different format. And today the court in Kisumu has acknowledged that, and they say there's no problem okay. with that public participation continuing. Okay, yes. let's take a break. Yeah, okay. so you, you cannot overinterpret the Absol judgment. You can't, is, you can't make your own interpretation. That, that is, is the interpretation that of the judge. That is hairs. The essence is public participation, right. and either it is stopped or it is not. But you're not when you judge. are conducting a hearing, <laughs> yes, and somebody like you, uh, Jeff, you come with something written, yeah. yes, and you explain it in summary, and then you say the full dossier is here. How will I tell you that you cannot submit the, what you've actually just summarized? Mm. That's just nonsense. Okay. What uh, Andre Bolotienda Amolo, Amolo is doing now is he's trying to write his own judgment. On the one hand, you have just told us that we must obey court orders. We, so you must also follow what the judgment made. You All cannot right. now sit here and write your own judgment yeah. and begin to tell us what we should do. You are not the judge at all, all in right, this folks, case. Let me take and a break also, here. Let me take it a break. must be remembered that Parliament has, has obeyed the court order. They have, they have put in an appeal. They, did not, uh, they, not, they are not in contempt of the court order at all. But you are making an extension and If they have obeyed, deciding. why are they appealing? You can't obey. You can't appeal what you've obeyed. No. You see, it's very simple. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on that note, let's agree to disagree for once <laughs> <laughs> and take a break and talk about um, the president and opposition leader are in disagreement when it comes to dialogue with the judiciary. Why? Why? Shouldn't there be some kind of dialogue? One side says yes, the other side says no. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Keep tweeting at Krenanga Jeff. This is a brilliant conversation with two brilliant lawyers. Ooh, I'm getting an education here in jurisprudence. Is that what they call it? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that, thank God I got it right. <laughs> and he's trying to write his own. He's now made himself the judge. <laughs> judge, jury, and execution. Exactly. <laughs> this is Legrand from Simple Generations.